Got it all set up? Yep. Alright. Should be stand in front of it. Make sure you're right down the crotch. Well, you can do what you want, huh? Good. Looks like we had a big crowd today. Oh, Dan? Yeah, but like, how's it going? Uh, that? Not really. Well, basically, yeah, that's it. Oh, right uh, you just get so. mirrored then? Yeah. That's fine. So, yeah, I'll just. Do you need to like bring anything up on there? Or? No, but you should probably drop yeah. the. Yeah, I was just gonna display. maximize it. Yeah, get that. Get that going. You didn't hear me talking about it the entire time. Oh, I pooped all over it. I didn't really. I didn't poop all over it, but my. I think I. I got the, the look up table. You know what you I got it. My my lookup table. Yeah, I was just getting non available. Like some of them were working perfect, and then I was getting. I did, and it still didn't work. Uh no, just hit screen right. Display on. Oh, display. That's what I didn't do first. That's what and that's what Landon told me. There was a sorting thing, but I had I did it. I had sorted it. So I think that maybe like my Excel sheet didn't update or something like that because then I, I saw that it didn't work and then I went back and I just I ended up not being able to get it. So that's the only part of my formula that's off. And so hopefully I'll be like just minus one or two, yeah. But like the first part of it was easy besides that. I don't know. Yeah. Data mining hero. Yeah, it's an old. He gave us a he gave us a place that was supposed to be extremely easy. Yeah, that one was that one was tough. No one said anything. Yeah. That's funny. Is it six o'clock? I have no idea. Six oh two. Six oh three. Alright. How's it going guys? Great. Great. Awesome. Alright. Well, thanks for coming in this nice weather. Snowy weather for coming to be dedicated to Digital Forensics Club. Um uh before we start, uh Kevin's gonna be talking about cryptocurrency, bitcoins and Coinier West and all sorts of cool things uh, relating to that. Um, so try to give him your full attention. I know it'll be tough um, with the computer monitors in front of us, but try your best. Uh, before we start, though, I wanted to ask, um, what kind of things would you guys be interested in doing this semester? Topics. Just throw out some topics for me. So we can kind of focus on some. We have we have some ideas. Um, we have like a pretty big project that we're working on that's going to be really awesome. That we we're going to try to make like a, almost like a competition out of um, combining network forensics, cell phone, GPS, and just our normal hard drive forensics. We'll try to make like a little team competition out of it. Um, it should be pretty cool, but it probably won't be for like another month or something. We gotta get that. It's a pretty big project, so we gotta get it going. But uh, what other ideas would you guys like to learn about? Anything? Yeah. Mobile devices. Mobile devices. <laughs> that works. <laughs> that works great. We'll talk about mobile devices. We could do something like that. Oh, you're just if stretching. You can, if you've got time, you can. We're also going to try to work in uh, some encryption. Yeah. Yep. You want to learn some hardware? Okay. Thank you. Guys to, like, take apart a computer and put it back together, type thing. Yeah. Yeah, we could do that. That'd be kind of cool. The different connections. Yeah, we could do something like that. That'd be interesting. Hey, thanks for joining us. Yeah. 
Do you need to do something? <laughs> or just... Why did you... Um... So... There's a ACM LAN party on Sunday, if any of you would like to go. There's usually every video game there. Pizza. No. No food. So... 12 to 8. 12 to 8. Yeah. So... That's a pretty cool club um, for computer, computer science. Is it like laptops only? You can bring your laptop. They have usually these. These? People usually build some consoles. So they bring consoles, they have mm -hmm. Wii's, you can bring your laptop. I think they do magic. Right? And magic. They do magic. Like magic tricks or... Magic. The, the gathering. If you want to do magic, Jared, <laughs> that, I, I would go to that party. That sounds interesting. I don't know any magic tricks. Um, you should learn. Yeah, I should. So none of you guys have anything else you'd like to learn about? So we have hardware, phones, we talked about encryption. I would like to see uh, do more things with network forensics. More, more network forensics? That'd be awesome, yeah. We can definitely do that. Josh, you think you're about to say something. Oh, I was thinking maybe, I don't, I don't know if this is feasible, how about, say, video game consoles like Xbox and PlayStation forensics? Does anybody have an old Xbox have an that Xbox we can tear one. their hard drive out of? Like the original <laughs> Xbox. Even X. Like oh, that would actually original Xbox. That would actually be interesting. Yeah, let's let's talk about that. That's a, not a bad idea. I'd be interested in that too. Hmm. Uh, first yeah. Uh, okay. That'd be interesting. Okay, so if we could like take a hard drive out of something like that. I know like for Microsoft products, um, the Xbox runs off of a, a FAT file system called FATX. Um, it'd be interesting to see if that's a lot like the other FAT file systems that we have. So that'd be a good one. Maybe we could try to make something out of that. Um, anything else? I'd like to see a, like, a right blocker in action. A right blocker in action. Yeah. We could throw that in with hardware. hardware yeah. yeah, we could do something like that. Who? Would anybody be interested in seeing like um, uh, a physical imager and how that works? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Are you Are you raising your hand? Yeah. Yeah. We have a physical imager in the lab. Um, we might be able to get something like that working. I don't know if we could bring it down here, but maybe we could have a field trip. <laughs> to McCormick. Do we need our parents' signatures? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And your sisters. And <laughs> all, everybody has to sign off on that one. Yeah. Um, yeah, but maybe we could try to get that to work. That'd be pretty cool. And with that, we could do, um, you guys, have you, have you heard of this uh, Celebrate UFED mobile touch analyzer? Yeah. Has anybody heard of that? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, it's a pretty cool, like, cell phone analyzer. We can do, like, a show and tell with both of those things. Um, we can do something like that. Get some ideas. You trying the sound secretary? And your yep. head? Alright. I'm sorry, I didn't tell you to write that down yeah. beforehand. It's okay. Let me just quick. Yeah. Uh, I have a little bit of background on that. I have a PowerPoint from a few years ago. That would be good. I agree. Mac forensics, and yeah. you have those parsing sheets. We could we could make something out of Mac forensics. Yeah, we'll keep that down too. So Mac hardware, network, cell phones, physical analyzer, more um, video game consoles. Video game consoles. All right, that's good. Thank you for those ideas. We'll try to get something good with that. Okay, you ready? Okay. All right. So is it all? Good to go, or is video? Yeah, it's been yeah, recording. Yeah, it's been recording this. We said the video dropped. All right, so Kevin's gonna do crypto. Yep. All right. So cryptocurrencies in the news a lot, and a lot of people don't really know what it is. 
So basically, the definition is that it's a digital medium of exchange. If you're kind of confused as to what that is, think of it as like an airline mile or Starbucks dollar. It's kind of like how they have it as location specific and they have those as company regulated. Um, how cryptocurrency differs is you actually have direct access to your accounts of money. You don't have like a middleman or banks to regulate your currency or fees for any of your money. Um, you're basically completely in charge of it. Um, so how you manage your cryptocurrency is with a digital wallet. Um, it's similar to a physical wallet in the sense that it stores your money and it's similar to a bank in the fact that um, you kind of manage your money through it. However, the main two components of the digital wallet are an account number, which is public and anyone can see that. That's how they send bitcoins to you and how you receive them. And then the private key, which is your personal uh, number, which allows you to access your code. Um, you can manage your wallet through your computer, your cell phone, or online, depending on how you set up your wallet initially. Um, they've actually started making physical digital wallets, which are little devices similar size to like a cell phone. Uh, and you can actually track your uh, payments and spending of bitcoins and similar currencies. Um, similar to a physical wallet, however, if you lose the wallet and its contents are gone forever, they're just kind of floating in the abyss. If you don't have either the physical files that have your account number and your private key, you can't just contact someone and say, hey, I lost my account information. Can you send that to me again? Um, so you want to do backups because if your computer crashes, your wallet's gone. And people actually have made uh, digital and paper backups now. So here's what a digital wallet looks like. This is uh, one alternate currency called WorldCoin. Um, so basically, as you can see here, it shows uh, any currency that has been sent to or received, and then the address of who it's been sent to and the amount. And then uh, you also have your balance here. And then here's an example of a paper backup. So basically you have your label that it's for Bitcoin, since there are so many different currencies that you can have, you want to kind of label them. You have your public key there and your private key, and then you can also have your balance. So that's a good thing to have on hand for if your physical backup ever does crash. So how you basically start with any of these currencies is you download the digital wallet and that's a small file relatively. However, the thing that takes a long time and why we're basically not doing it here is the fact that you have to download a blockchain and that's a very long process. I downloaded one and it took over 30 hours. Um, so basically contains your wallet's address, how many bitcoins or other alternative currency uh, between you and another person. Uh, blockchains pretty much act like a ledger. They store all the transactions that have occurred throughout that entire currency's history. Um, basically miners work by verifying those transactions and checking the addresses to receive, or addresses of receiving funds to make sure they're correct. Once it's approved and the transaction goes through, it usually takes anywhere between seconds and 10 minutes. And then those actions are put in a transa transaction block, sent to the sending address from the receiving ad or the receiving address from the sending address, and the block gets added to the blockchain. And then blockchain gets updated for everyone and it shows the latest transaction. So where do Bitcoins come from? Basically with like the US dollar and Euro and other forms of currency, the government decides when to print and when to distribute the paper money. Bitcoins don't have a central government, so miners basically use specialized software to solve math problems, in this case they're hashes, and uh, include a certain number of coins as payment for completing that action. Um, basically it's a smart way to distribute the currency and creates incentive for more people to mine and keep the transactions going. So Bitcoin was the first cryptocurrency started in 2009 and uh, they're often compared to pre-war, pre-civil war currencies where many states would have their own currency or sometimes even 
states would have different currencies within themselves. And uh, problems was when you'd go from state to state, you'd have to exchange your money for their currency. Um, cryptocurrencies are also compared to valuable metals, with Bitcoin being the most valuable compared to gold, Litecoin being compared to silver, and then other currencies falling somewhere below that. So here's a list of all the current uh, cryptocurrencies. Um, everything from Bitcoin to bottle caps, if anyone knows Fallout. Um, there's Lucky Coin. There's Ron Paul Coin. There's Barbecue Coins. There's a whole bunch of different things. And as people have talked about, there's Kanye West uh, Coins. Um, so basically why cryptocurrencies even have value is that in order, in order for them to succeed, people need to trust it, use it, and then mine it. So with more people putting faith in it, it's what gives it value, kind of like what gives anything value in the world. So a lot of currencies will end up uh, coming out and then failing because people don't put trust into it, they don't use it, and then no one mines it, so it falls by the wayside. So Bitcoin uses SHA-256 for its uh, cryptography, and uh, there are other uh, cryptocurrencies that use that as well. However, it's tough to succeed as a miner, making uh, the currencies more expensive. So most new currencies use uh, uh, script-based hashing, which keeps the mining and the currencies competitive. And the currency is worth less, but you're allowed to get more coins. So what you can always do is you can transfer those coins to work up to get bitcoins if you really want them since they have such a high value right now. I believe the last time I checked it was around like $800 for a single bitcoin whereas what? 846 whereas other currencies might be worth cents but you can get thousands of them so you can slowly build up with them and then trade them in. So how mining works is basically your computer is acting as a miner and solving math problems. For Bitcoin, it's SHA-256. For other ones, it can be script. So your computer basically gets a rating for how many hashes it can figure out a second. I have a system, for instance, and it's 470 kilohashes a second. It's nothing spectacular, but it's just kind of a basic system. So at first, uh, basically, people would use their CPUs to mine. They were power inefficient, however, and it bogged down your system, and you wouldn't really be able to use it very well. So, since you didn't get a whole lot of hashes, people then switched to GPUs, or the graphics card. So, it allowed them to hash anywhere between 50 to 100 times faster, and it required less power. So, here's an example of a GPU mining rig. Basically, you want it open, because it'll generate a lot of heat. You basically fit a lot of graphics cards in it, and the benefit is that it maximizes your hash rate compared to CPU mining. However, that still wasn't fast enough for a lot of people, so uh, they basically started making specialized equipment and developed field programmable gate arrays, or FPGAs, which basically repurposed existing technology, and people could attach them via USB, and it reduced the power considerably compared to graphics cards and it freed up system resources on the host machines. However, they've also come out with what are ASICs now, or application specific integrated circuits, which allows unprecedented speeds between five giga hashes. Yes? Do ASIC miners only work for Bitcoin? No, they only work for SHA-256 currently, however there are people working on script-based uh, hashing uh, ASICs. So you can get even up to 1,500 uh, giga hashes, and they require even less power than FPGA or GPUs. And currently there are two companies making them, Butterfly Labs and Avalon. So here's an example of FPGA mining, where people just have tons and tons and tons of equipment all tethered together, USB. And then an example of ASIC mining, where it's a very small machine that's basically purpose just for mining and kind of runs on its own. So, like I said, script mining doesn't have ASICs or FPGAs available, so it's still competitive for people to use graphics cards for mining, 
which is why a lot of alternate currencies are more desirable for people. Whereas if you try and mine with a graphics card for bitcoins, for instance, it might take you a year or more to get one coin. Whereas you can get thousands and thousands of coins in that year and trade it up maybe two or three times over for bitcoin. Um, so with graphics cards, AMD cards perform much better at mining than NVIDIA graphics card due to the way they're structured. Uh, last time I checked, I think it was like the Titan is NVIDIA's top tier graphics card, which is like $1,000, and you get maybe 200 kilohash a second. And I have a mid-range mid graphics card from a few years ago, and it more than doubles that hash rate. Um, so what you want to basically start out with is finding out which is the uh, best currency for you to mine. So you want to go somewhere like Coin Wars, where it has a calculator. And what you can do is you can input the hash rate of your computer, which they have a whole bunch of different comparison on this. Uh, basically, it's like a Wikipedia article for Bitcoin, where it'll have listed different graphics cards, CPUs, and even FPGAs and ASIC miners, and it can tell you what's the best currency for you to mine. Uh, it also allows you to put in how many watts your computer outputs and how what the cost of power is where you live. So you can find out if it's cost efficient for you, if you're making more money than you're spending in electricity. Um, it also tells you what the current price per coin is, the amount that you'd be able to mine based on the cost of the coin, and then uh, the amount of coins that you would mine, like after electricity. So, first thing you want to do then after that is you want to basically join a mining pool. Mining is very difficult, not profitable, uh, or at least not highly profitable on your own. So many people choose to join pools and uh, basically allows you to work together to mine coins and then you split the profits that you make from earning coins in the long run. Uh, there are many pools that exist for every type of currency. Some have fees or payments to join or maintain an account with that pool. Just check and read what different people think about those pools because some people have been really ripped off by pools by it not being legitimate and people just kind of taking advantage of people joining random pools, not knowing anything about it. So you have to install a software, some software for mining. Uh, there's FB, yeah. BFG Miner, um, which is popular and based on uh, C programming language. Uh, pretty much cross-platform, and you can even use uh, OpenWRT routers. So you can kind of like program a uh, router to even just be the brain. And then there's CG Miner, which uh, is kind of becoming more popular now. And uh, it allows you to basically set up a batch file. So here's basically an example of the batch file that you would set up where you have the name of the program. Yes? Are these free? Yes, they are free. Yep. They are free to download, and there's tons of uh, basically instructions on how to set them up. Will both of them work for any coin, or will them work for mining search? Um, I believe they both work for all coins, uh, like CG Miner, for example. You can see here in the example it says script, so you have to actually specify that it's for a script-based coin that you're mining. Um, otherwise, you can leave that blank, I believe, or maybe you have to specify SHA-256. I haven't really mined any of SHA-256 uh, coins. And then, basically, you put in your pools domain and port, your username and your worker from that site and then that worker's password. And then after that, it'll launch and look pretty much like this. It'll allow you to see your graphics card. This example has two graphics cards. It'll tell you like the temperature, and it tells you basically how much your uh, hash is. And then it'll just kind of go through, and it'll show all the uh, hashing that's being completed and accepted. So cryptocurrencies kind of have gotten a bad rap. In the beginning, the media associated cryptocurrency with funding illegal activities, selling drugs, hiring hitman, hitmen. And uh, the main example is Silk Road, which was kind of like an Amazon or eBay of illegal drugs, weapons, you name it. You could pretty much buy it on there, and you could buy it with Bitcoins. 
their whole appeal was that it was supposed to be anonymous. However, they ended up getting busted because they were selling illegal goods. However, there are other coins out there. So Dogecoin, for example, was created in December, and it was considered a joke because it was based off the Doge meme, if anyone is familiar with that. However, they actually accomplished uh, a quite impressive feat, and they were able to raise enough money to send the Jamaican bobsled team to the Olympics this year. Worldcoin is another example of that. They were created in May of 2013, um, and January tw uh, 24th, they partnered with the Water Project, which is a group who helps build um, wells in Africa for more than 1 billion people who live in areas where water is a scarcity for them. And in five days, they surpassed their goal of $10,000 to uh, create a well in uh, Kenya. So where forensics comes in. Basically, any sort of illegal activity can occur with any currency. Um, Silk Road was one example where forensic examiner uh, could have a case where illegal activity is suspected using cryptocurrency. So it's important to kind of know a little bit about um, digital wallet software, mining hardware, software, and pools. Because if you get a suspect who has a digital wallet, it's possible they may have done transactions uh, for legal activities and having access to their wallet would give you the list of their transactions. However, if they're not in there or if they're unknown, you'd at least be able to have their address and be able to look at the blockchain to see transaction history. And then the other addresses might be unknown. However, it is a start. So that's pretty much it. Yep. Uh, Questions? So if I have a bunch of Bitcoins that I mine, how do I convert it to cash? So there's all sorts of uh, basically exchanges that can happen. Um, people were using PayPal for a while there. However, PayPal didn't really like it and started char charging a fee to uh, basically exchange Bitcoins for cash. I think it was something like 5% or even up to 12% I've heard. Yeah. So there's all sorts of different sites. You kind of got to research and find out what's the best for you. But typically, you're going to get charged some sort of uh, transaction fee. Have you ever done that? I have not. I literally just started looking into it this month, and, or technically January. And uh, I started mining uh, WorldCoin. And I have, I think, 150 WorldCoins. I haven't really done anything impressive. What? Is that a lot? Um, I get about 14 a day with 470 kilohash. It, it's not an overly impressive number. There are a lot of people who basically have tons and tons of video cards and get millihashes, which will obviously get a lot more coins per second or per day, and then allow you to get more. They're basically worth like 30 cents a coin right now, so it's not exactly a whole lot of money, whereas Bitcoins are worth like $846 a coin. And it started out at maybe cents to a few dollars. And so there are a lot of people who just kind of mined a whole lot of them. And uh, if they held on to them, they were able to sell them for quite a lot. I think when Silk Road uh, got busted, the price was around $120. And then it kind of plummeted down to, I think, maybe even 12 But since it's skyrocketed up again. And I know there's a lot of people who have lost accounts that they just kind of did it for a little bit, lost interest in it, stopped doing it. And now they're quite mad at the fact that there's basically no infrastructure to back up where you can get back your account password or number or any information. Yes? No, I have not. Yeah. Yeah, the problem it runs into whether or not they'd be able to actually use it or not, considering the fact they consider it kind of oh, yeah. black market and the fact that it's considered evidence, technically, probably. Yeah. Yes. Where can I spend my Bitcoins? 
So a lot of companies just recently have started accepting them, such as Overstock.com. Um, I kind of got to check. There's more and more places accepting them every day. Um, I don't believe that Amazon accepts them currently. Yes. Actually, to add on what you're saying, I just saw the other day, um, if anybody knows TigerDirect.com, they sell computer parts. They just started accepting Bitcoin like last week. Um, but the question I had was, um, if it's all anonymous, how is there a way that you can buy Bitcoin? Uh, well, couldn't they, you just buy Bitcoin and never um, receive it? Um, it's not technically anonymous, only because it's attached to the blockchain. I only caught about half of that. <laughs> well, the, uh, you know how, did you check out the website that has the blockchain information? No, I, I yeah, all that's literally have only been looking into this for a little bit. So how that, that's how yeah, yeah. That's how a lot of the stuff <laughs> was um, uncovered, uh, like all the illegal transactions and stuff. So that's how they trace back a lot of stuff to this info was because each of the blocks that are mine for the blockchain added to that of um, where that person's location is like that for that block of mine. Yeah. So really they're not anonymous at all. <clears throat> not really. I mean some might be more so than others. But I think also I think the government right. issued some kind of they're trying to issue some kind of action record for Bitcoin so they can so, again, it's another downside. Yeah. I think it's as anonymous as you want to put work into it. So the average person is probably pretty anonymous. However, if you're being investigated or someone's trying to hack you, they can probably put the work in and find you. Any other questions? Any other questions for... <clears throat> so who's gonna go mine some bitcoins now? They already are, right? Yeah. I'm actually, uh, I actually spent all last night trying to get Linux to work on my computer so I can mine uh, Doge coins actually. Nice. How's it going so far? I've been good to work after staying up to level like, 2 trying to get it to work. Oh, so uh, I give up yeah, side. so you don't necessarily have to join a pool to mine for bitcoins? You don't have to, yourself. however, it becomes a lot more profitable if you do. Oh. because of all the work required to mine coins if you're in a pool of people it you work together basically to mine them and then when you get basically your reward payout for mining it gets distributed amongst everyone hmm. whereas if you're on your own you'd have to be working a lot harder and a lot longer to get that payout i see are you in a pool yes i am i believe it's called d2 for world coin there's also websites now that you can pay that mine for you yeah you can basically pay different companies who <laughs> offer the hosting of the software <laughs> and the hardware and you basically pay per hash yeah. however much you want to pay per hour yep that sounds counterproductive for you. okay so you're paying for a coin that's worth less than what you're probably paying for it. All depends. People could be paying to mine bitcoins with extremely high hash rates and they don't have to worry about paying electricity or anything because that's kind of built in there. I could see how some people could think it's a benefit, but I think more so it's just them trying to take advantage of people. I'm good. I'm back. Any, uh, any other questions? Alright, uh, that's all we have for today. Thanks for coming. Thank you, Kevin. Yeah.
Is it is it possible we could uh, put that? Yeah, yeah, I was gonna put the PowerPoint on the Facebook group. All right, great. Right. That's a pretty good PowerPoint. You wanna work your magic over here, Steve? Oh, you're putting the table away. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, sorry. For what?